You guys remember this guy, right? The uh, Star Wars build thing that, uh, oh, I didn't even screw that in all the way. Way to go, Jay. <clears throat> That's been on the back burner forever and in the back of my videos, and you guys keep asking me if I'm gonna finish it. Well, the answer is no. Because I'm gonna start a new project that I probably won't finish. ViewSonic is proud to announce our all new Elite XG32OU gaming monitor. The XG32OU features a 4K 32 inch display with a one millisecond response time and 150 hertz refresh rate and builds upon ViewSonic's revered Elite panel lineup. The ViewSonic Elite series monitors feature clean aesthetic design that blend well with any setup, whether it be professional or personal, due to their sleek design and tasteful lighting. To learn more about ViewSonic's gaming monitors or to see their full lineup of monitors, click the link in the description below. The reason why I'm not gonna complete this build, honestly, I, I might complete the painting and stuff of it, just so you guys can see the, the finalized, like the way the paint and stuff was supposed to be with the explosion hole, remember the explosion and all that stuff happened. The idea was that like some railgun rounds went push, push through the rig and then one exploded out. I still wanna do this for the sense of like painting and, and having fun. You can see here we were playing around with the 3D printer for some like um, thruster, ports and stuff. These are not the right shape. They, we're gonna work on all that. I'll probably still finish, finish the exterior, but it won't be a working build. Mostly because I just don't trust the H1 AIO system that's in here. It's got that inline pump in the rad. I know they've been prone to failure. I just don't wanna deal with that. But I wanted something cool, so when I go to LAN parties and stuff, which are starting again, the original Star Wars build, which was so freaking popular, filled with B-rolls of the flickering lights and crap of the old video, this right here is the, uh, wait, I, I forgot. This is the, uh, Doug DeMiro, you're not watching. This is the Falcon Northwest Tiki. We did a unboxing and like a performance test and temperature testing of this guy. This is the 7800X3D, so AM5, AMD CPU, and it's got the ProArt 4080 in here. I kind of wish it wasn't the ProArt only because of how expensive it is, but no other 4080 would fit in here because remember the ProArt's the small, like reasonably sized one. So the other problem is the hardware that's in here is fairly out of date. By out of date, I mean it's AM4, 5000 series CPU and like a 3080 or whatever. There's no GPU in here at the moment, but it's, a, it's old news. Old hardware no one cares about anymore and it's totally obsolete and you should, if you have it, you should just throw it away. I'm gonna put slash S, because if I don't, people are gonna think Jay's being serious. Um, this is clearly a step up in terms of performance, but I just like the overall aesthetic of this guy. I still am gonna, Kel, I know you're watching, I'm gonna be bashing some holes in this and I'm gonna be blaster damaging it and railgun explosions, kind of like you see here. But um, this'll be fun because the flat surfaces are gonna allow me more area to do like greebles or greeblies, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, and I can still have fun with the, like the, the mounts, like these guys right here. Let me just take one off real quick so you guys can see. Whoops. This will give me some fun flat surface areas to play with. But the cool thing is, even though this particular system, when I open it up, and today's video is gonna be tearing it down, prepping it for paint and getting the base paint on there of like the, uh, and probably doing the damage of bashing the holes. I feel a little, a little uh, energetic today. And I, and I kind of feel like just breaking some shit. It's just one of those days you want to freak some stuff up. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I don't even need to, I don't even need to set this up <laughs> Boop. See, I mean, I can have some fun with this, right? I really can't. That, jeez. Jeez. This is the PSU intake right here. This was just a intake, or a, a blow through for the cross flow for the GPU. What we have over here are two fans that are very slim intake fans for the GPU. So these blow on the GPU to give it fresh air from outside. So the size of the chassis doesn't actually interfere negatively. The problem is it's got a 120 AIO. And even though the Asetek AIOs are a lot better than they used to be, um, I will be probably, to be honest, exterior mounting a rad right here. That would give me some more area to have some fun with to put like a, we can 3D print a shield or something for it that's got greebles and shit on it. So that'll be fun, kind of fun. But like I said, starting today, I've got to tear this down and prepare it for paint. I've got to blow some holes in this ship, if you will. And that's what we have to work with right there. So as you can see, we've got our 4080, we've got the PSU mount right here, we've got the ITX motherboard and the Asa Tech pump. So this will not be mounted on the inside anymore. And you saw how like it 
pushed out because this is a lot of tubing to kind of, you know, sandwich on up in there. But uh, yeah, I, I think this will be fun. And you know, fortunately, Kelt, design, Kelt designs all the cases. If you guys, I keep referencing Kelt. He's the founder and CEO slash president of Falcon Northwest. And he designs these chassis. These are not like off the shelf. They, he designs them and builds them and stuff. I just now have to figure out how to take it all apart. What could go wrong? I highly recommend uh, some magnetic trays from Amazon or Harbor Freight or whatever. That way you can kind of keep track of your screws that way they're not falling all over the place. But I don't even need this bracket right here. Although it does have my, my serial number and stuff right here. I have it covered up for obvious reasons. I don't think we technically need this on there. I don't think it's structural or anything. I didn't do an, a, a, a tear down or anything because I wasn't the purpose of what I was doing when it came to the review. I just wanted to see what the temperatures were like in such a small case. But you can see now, um, the amount of ventilation and stuff in here is pretty awesome, but I've never taken one of these apart. I don't think we'll do a full teardown guide right now. I think what we'll do is I'll just get the thing taken apart. I'll show all the pieces blown out and then we will get, uh, we'll get to painting because I should be able to get at least the primer coats on today. So here it is completely taken apart. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is without a doubt, the w most well thought out ITX type of chassis I've seen yet. We already talked about the fact that it has cross flow vents for air to go straight through the GPU so it gets plenty of cooling. We had the two slim fans which are right here. I think these are only like 10 mil fans. They're even slimmer than 15. I think they're 15. It says 15.53. So now we have two slim fans that are daisy chained. I wonder if he ordered these specific for this and they got rubber feet on there or whatever. But it's such a well thought out chassis. Uh, I love it. I love it a lot. So this is technically what I have to work with. Plus the, this is the base. I won't do anything with this. This is just a big chunk of aluminum, which it sounds like armor plating. Uh, and then here, you know, I can play around with the damage and stuff. So I sort of got to figure out what I'm going to do here. I need to put all these parts away. I do think I'm going to cut out the grill on here because I'm planning on having two fans on the outside pushing air into the GPU so I can have, get, run a 25 mil fan. That way I can have more airflow just shoving air into this chassis. Uh, and we don't need to blow that air directly onto this honeycomb grill. So I'm gonna probably cut that off. I am not too sure what these are. are these just, they're just little plugs. Oh, I know exactly why that's there. Shows how much he's thought about this. You can configure this case or this build with different GPUs. Now this one happened to have the 4080 Pro Art in it. But if you get a smaller card, like a 4060, 4070, whatever, these are the different mounting distances he needs for the bracket that should, that's right here on the back of the card to give it support. So these are just, these are just gap fillers so that if they move the bracket in, they have the holes there. Other thing I want to point out is uh, when I was doing the repasting, and this turned into like a Falcon Northwest video. It's just, I didn't do this during the review. I mentioned how in my laptop video that they sent me, I was repasting with KPX. They're like, fun fact, did you know that we use KPX in all of our desktops? Well, there's your proof. There's the blue, uh, there's the blue paste. I already cleaned the paste off of that. You can see some of it down in there though. Great minds think alike. All right, let me get all these pieces uh, put away someplace safe because I don't have any boxes for these components. I don't want anything to get damaged. I'm going to reuse all the components and then we'll start uh, kit bashing, literally. Dude, this is just in there with the force of God. I don't know what. Okay, so this was on the base. Apparently at one point they intended on this to be airflow in some way, but this is what's mounted to there. So I wanted to point that out. Uh, I'll be replacing this mesh now because <laughs> it's glued in there, but It's really stuck. <laughs> just, just wanted to sort of point that out. I'm gonna tell you how cool Falcon's been though. They're like, if you break it, not this, but the laptop, if you break it, just let us know. Look, they mounted it before they painted it. So that's probably, I can't think, I don't see any glue or anything on here. I bet you it was just adhesive with the paint. Or the powder coat. That's probably all that was holding it on there, if you want to know the truth. Now it looks like recon armor. 
Okay, so I think what we decided here is this is where the, the flow through was for the GPU air to exhaust out. I think I'm gonna utilize this hole and maybe expand it a little bit and just kind of rip this open because then what we'll see is the heat sink on the back side of the GPU and then I can custom paint the back plate of the GPU uh, to match our JNN Jasonante theme uh, so that when you have this exposed area, you can see inside the GPU and all the wires and stuff coming out. Obviously the GPU itself isn't gonna be damaged, for hopefully. Um, see like, cause on this guy, where it really came in handy was the fact that what do you see in there? You just see a bunch of stuff, tubing and whatnot. This will just have the GPU right there, which may not be quite as believable, but this has more internal volume than this does. But the cool thing is we can really like greebly, greeble. I don't know what the correct word is. Phil says greebly, I say greeble. Um, it's probably whatever Adam Savage says it is, to be honest. This greebly is so universally used. It is called the universal greebly. So we'll start with this panel right here. Uh, I really like doing battle damage. You guys know this. Remember the Destiny 2 build? You know, I, I just, I love battle damage stuff. The Star Wars build. We'll start here, and I know I'm gonna have to cut some of that off. I'm gonna take my watch off, because doing this is exactly how I've destroyed the face of my watch in the past, with all the dremeling stuff. And I have better ways of doing stuff now, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> He's growing up. <laughs> I'm, I'm a real boy. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Don't want to spec it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems designed to fit your needs and budget. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT BLD Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so change of plans as is typical in these situations. I've cut out the hole here. Um, I've decided this is not gonna be the explosion. The hole's too big already. We're gonna be covering this in greebles. So I'm gonna put the explosion here and we'll have a greeble vent that, you know, will we'll lead into the explosion. But what this allows me to do is to be able to utilize the back plate of the graphics card and I can add greebles to the back plate and have that exploded out so it looks like it went through layers of the ship before the massive explosion. So that's the plan for that. I don't think I'm gonna cut out the grills here. I don't, I don't believe this is gonna be enough obstruction at all to put fans here and not have it blow cleanly through on the GPU, honestly. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Most of it's just because my Dremel bits, I don't have a lot of cutting wheels and um, just laziness to be honest, because a lot of this is just gonna be covered anyway. But we have, a, we have damage we have to make right here, at least right there. And maybe another one over here somewhere. So what I tend to do in these situations is cut stuff. <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say. It's grabbing. This is usually the part when people watching are like, dude, that looks like stuff. You can't rush art. You can see I've kind of, that's like, that's like the cross is the impact exit spot. Science, physics, that, that, where that comes to a point is where I wanted the center of the hole to be. And like I said, this next part's very delicate, requires very special tools. But the thing is I have to chop it up. Like it needs to look like it really just ripped out of there. The steel is actually thicker than other cases. So it's been a kind of a bitch to bend this. So I've been actually using heat to heat up the metal so it's like red hot and then bending it. The idea too is this would have been really hot, you know? So it allows me to just start folding up the metal and kind of creating this sort of a theoretical exit wound damage, if you will. Also it allows me to get my file in there. Cause I really do not want to turn this into a Finger Slicer 5000. I think for now, cause remember a rail gun, it's not an explosive. It's just a big dart. So the idea is this would look like it got sheared open by a dart. So you might be looking at this going, that doesn't look explosive. Explosive would be a lot more like what's on here because you can see the melted uh, stuff. So the idea is that the rail dart gun came through, split open the metal, 
and then I'm gonna make the inside, like what you can see in here, look like it has been damaged. I'm just toying with right now, opening up this hole a little bit wider, to be honest. It still has a little bit too much of a diamond shape, but I imagine that would be somewhat accurate because the railgun rounds are kind of a point, like a squared off point. They're not perfectly round. So they're designed to have a point, so they have these cutting edges as they go through stuff. Rail guns are real tech, but obviously at the scale we're talking about here and the, the expanse is a little different. So I think I'm gonna open up the hole a little bit. <laughs> That's a little better. That's a lot better. I still think I'm gonna have some of the greebles around it melted too, because the cool thing about them being PLA printed can melt it pretty easily. Um, that's pretty cool. It's a practical effect too, because you can see the melting of the paint because of the, the torch. But obviously I would be painting over that. So let me, that's still so sharp. <laughs> let me grind some of those edges down just for safety reasons. Then we'll put a coat of paint on it. Okay, so uh, there's our damage. I, this is a, a filed in line. I did a very light file on. I wanna see how, once it's painted, how much of it will show, because I do want to have some stress cracks and stuff in here. Um, this is just a proof of concept. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this off real quick. I'm going to brush off all the material from the, the filing. I mean, look at my hands, right? Don't want to inhale this dust. I should have been using a respirator, but whatever. So I'm going to clean it off. Use uh, alcohol on it. Isopropyl alcohol will help quite a bit once I get this cleaned up. That way we need to get a very good adhesion because paint jobs, people like to say, oh, that paint sucks. No, more than likely your preparation sucks. So when it comes to painting, preparation is just, if not more important as the paint itself. So this is just a Color Max Paint and Primer Matte Deep Gray. I don't care so much about the color. I've had pretty good luck with the Krylon Paint and Primer Mix. Um, this has been fully uh, cleaned up, surface cleaned, alcohol wiped, the whole deal. So, and it's very textured, so we should have pretty good adhesion. The first layer is gonna be very thin. Should be wearing a respirator for this, but do as I say, not as I do. That's literally all we're gonna do for the first coat. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so this is just the primer paint base coat, kind of going with like a battleship gray kind of a color. Uh, it's dry to the touch, but it's not cured yet. It'll have to cure overnight. But if we just go ahead and set it on here now, there we go. Obviously I'm gonna be weathering it a bit. Probably won't be going with the whole like rust theme like I've done on, on the past. Cause I guess that's the one thing I've kind of realized is like, I guess things would only sort of rust on the surface of a planet, but not in space cause there's no moisture. But, oxygen. Or oxygen, you're right, so it can't, it can't grow. Um, anyway, there's that right there. So you can you know, obviously imagine the GP will be there. We'll have stuff going through that. So not bad for a part one. I still have a lot of area to play with greebles on here, greeblies, and then on this side as well. Um, damn, it's so bent through that. <laughs> I sure as heck did a number on this guy, didn't I? So this, these little pins should help relocate that though, where they need to go. There. Nice. <laughs> it looks kind of cool too, Tone. But anyway, I know it doesn't look like much, okay? It's the first part of 17 parts and a year worth of build. Guys, I swear to God, I'm gonna try not to take a year to do this. I wanna get this done quick. Uh, I'm excited about it and I wanna do it. But there's a lot of 3D printing aspect to this. I think that's gonna look pretty neat. Yeah, I imagine we're gonna have an external rad right here. We'll have some vents and stuff on that. Greeble's going everywhere. This will be all sooted up. I'm gonna end up having wires poke out like I did the other one. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. But I, that's not too bad. Not too bad for a start. I got most of the sharp edges kind of taken care of. And as you paint them too, the paint really builds up and kind of gets rid of some of the sharp edges. But I, I did get rid of a lot of the sharp edges on there. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna have to cut like a hole in here and then I'll come up with some sort of 3D printed cover for that because this is how I'm gonna have the tubing for the AIO come out to the brackets which are mounted out here that the AIO will be attached to. So we've got some uh, stuff to figure out. Not bad for part one. This is where I think you guys, I love asking you guys for ideas because every now and then like someone will come up with an idea that's just like, that's genius. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Probably because I'm not a genius. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Um, the JNN Jason Nante from the Jupiter fleet 
We'll be wait, Jupiter fleet. Does that make me Mars? Am I Martian? <laughs> Wasn't the Martian? Was it the Martians that had the Jupiter fleet? No, they both had to have a, a fleet out there, though. That's why they had the Ganymede the issues. So anyway, all right, you should watch the Expanse if you haven't. It's not sponsored or anything. It's just an awesome show if you like space and real physics regarding space. All right, thanks for watching. Sound off down below with what kind of neat ideas you think we should have for this. And I'm gonna have to clean up this mess and then get to looking at uh, Thingiverse and see what kind of neat greebles we can come up with. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>